now that free agency has calmed down, I think it's time to reflect on some players that saw an increase in value based on some of their team's moves. Hey, I'm Bill Enright with SI Fantasy Football Analyst Michael Fabiano. And Fabs, you know, free agency starts kind of crazy, but settle down a little bit. Let's look at some of the moves that help boost some values. Let's start off with quarterback. You're looking at Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, and I'm not afraid to say it, was one of my sleepers from last season. Unfortunately, statistically, he ended up being more of a hibernation case. But look what the Giants have done, right? You bring in Kenny Galladay. You bring in Kyle Rudolph. You've already got Sterling Shepard. You've got Darius Slayton. You've got Saquon Barkley in the backfield. They've got to shore up the offensive line, Bill. But the Giants have put Daniel Jones in a position to succeed. And I know many times in the past, I've been one season too soon on predicting a breakout. Maybe that's the case with Daniel Jones. All right, let's move over to running back Kenyon Drake signed with the Raiders. That leaves Chase Edmonds as the sole man in the Arizona backfield. What do you make of Edmonds' value this year? Right, his value is certainly on the rise. But I do wonder, and I posted this on Twitter, will Arizona go into the regular season with Chase Edmonds as their lead back? Because if you look at the depth chart behind him, there's not much. And Chase Edmonds actually liked that tweet. And I'm guessing he was being sarcastic with that (laughs) like. I don't know that Arizona is going to go into the season with Edmonds as the featured back. They could add a back in free agency. They can add a back in the draft at 5'9 and 210. Can he be a featured runner? I, I mean, I suppose he can. But when he's played that role in the past, he's been inconsistent. So for right now, his value is on the rise, and he probably isn't a big fan of mine at this point. Yeah, t- Twitter needs a uh, sarcasm button. I'm gonna have to. That's true. Talk to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk to Uncle Jack about that one. Uh, let's move over to wide receiver John Rossi signed with the Giants, and AJ Green. He went and joined Chase Edmonds in Arizona. So, what do you make of T. Higgins, the second-year playmaker for Cincinnati? And you forget, Kenny Galladay had an offer from the Bengals, which ultimately he turned down to go to the Giants. So. I was real thrilled about that because I love T. Higgins. Last year, he had about a 19% target share. With A.J. Green gone, that's 104 targets available in the passing game. Joe Burrow will be back. So unless Cincinnati gets crazy and drafts a high-impact wide receiver, well, Higgins looks like they're number one with Tyler Boyd as the two. Higgins could be a massive breakout candidate next season. Let's go to tight ends. Fantasy football managers know it's always a struggle to find one that can put up consistent stats. Let's talk about Irv Smith Jr. with the Minnesota Vikings. With the release of Kyle Rudolph, and ultimately he went to Big Blue in New York, Irv Smith's now the guy in Minnesota. And he showed flashes of breaking out last year. He had three touchdowns, 51.3 fantasy points over his final four games. So with Rudolph gone, and Rudolph only garnered about an 8% target share, but you take what you can get, right, Bill? I feel like Irv Smith Jr. has a shot to be a number one tight end next season, assuming Minnesota doesn't make any further moves at the position. Irv Smith Jr. certainly flashed a lot of potential when Rudolph was out. Fab, I think you have like, what, 20 other players that that you have in this article uh, that that saw a boost in value with post-free agency news? You got to check it out. It's really, really great stuff. And as we always say here at Sports Illustrated, the fantasy football season, it never ends. So go to si.com slash fantasy.